Welcome back. In this video, we'll start talking about modifying pipe networks and editing the properties of pipes and nodes in InfraWizard. There are multiple ways to edit your networks in InfraWizard. You can, for example, use AutoCAD commands to modify the alignments of pipelines. And there are several smart editing tools here that can help you do more advanced operations like splitting and merging pipes. The properties of pipes and nodes can be simply edited by double-clicking one of them to show its properties panel. Or using the group edit tables that make it very easy to manipulate any number of elements in batch operations. In this session, we'll discuss the use of AutoCAD commands in network editing, and we'll go through each of the other editing methods in the coming few sessions. There are several AutoCAD commands that you can easily use to modify the plan geometry of your pipe networks. A few commands, however, can be harmful to your InfraWizard project and thus should be avoided. First, let's talk about the useful commands. You can use the commands move and stretch to change the alignments of your pipelines. If you move a node, you'll see the pipes connected to it will just follow because they have to stay connected to the node. For the same reason, moving a pipe element alone will not change its location because it will remain connected to its start and end nodes. You can move any number of pipes and nodes together in one action. And InfraWizard will directly update the geometry to keep the connectivity between them. You can notice that the pipe length and slope are automatically updated when we change alignments while the invert levels remain unchanged. We can do the same thing using stretch command, just like what I'm doing now. I can do this also with a multi-vertex pipe. The rotate command is also applicable, although it's not very useful, but you can still use it if you need. You can use Erase command to erase any network element, but as we said before, erasing a node element will automatically erase all pipes connected to it, because a pipe element must be connected to a start node and an end node. Erasing an annotation or a direction arrow will not affect your network. If you want to get rid of one of them, you can just erase it. But have in mind that InfraWizard will regenerate this annotation when you make any change to its parent element. You can erase profiles if you no longer need them. You don't have to erase them from the Manage Profiles panel. This is another way to erase profiles. but you can still erase them directly on the drawing. There are some objects that InfraWizard will not allow you to erase. These are crossing annotations and the marks of low and high points in pressure networks. You'll notice that if you erase one of these objects, it is instantly regenerated. InfraWizard prohibits erasing these objects because erasing them manually can be misleading. The right way to control the display of crossing annotations and the marks of low and high points is using their settings panels. The crossing analysis panel allows you to hide all crossing annotations by moving all network combinations to the list of undisplayed combinations. You can also display a certain group of crossing annotations by selecting a set of crossing combinations and setting the critical clearance value here. Similarly, the low and high points settings allow you to select which networks to show low and high marks for. We'll have a separate session explaining the crossing analysis and low high points analysis very soon. The next command is undo. You can always undo any action you take in InfraWizard. For example, erasing a pipe, moving a node, splitting this pipe.
Using undo, everything returns to its original state. Now let's move to AutoCAD commands that you should avoid while working on your InfraWizard project. These would include the commands that duplicate elements, like copy, mirror, and array. These commands cannot be used actually to duplicate InfraWizard project elements. For example, if you copy a pipe element, the new object will be a native polyline object and will not act as a new pipe. To create pipes instead, you should use the Create Pipes command to convert lines or polylines into pipes or import a network from an external source. Same thing applies to profiles. If I copy a profile here, the new object will just be a block object that is not associated with my InfraWizard project. Another command you should avoid is explode. Exploding an InfraWizard element is just like erasing it. An exploded element is no longer associated with the project. For example, if I explode this node, you'll notice that the pipes connected to it are automatically erased, as if the node is erased. And if I explode this profile, it will break down into its basic objects, and it is no longer tracked by InfraWizard because it's no longer part of the InfraWizard project. You should also avoid using the ref edit command to modify the node blocks because the node block is automatically created by InfraWizard based on the structure dimensions in the node properties. So if I want to change the shape or the size of the node block, I do this here by updating the properties of the node structure itself. That's everything for today's session. I would strongly encourage doing some practice using all commands we discussed today to have a better sense of using AutoCAD commands in editing your InfraWizard networks. In the next video, you'll learn about using the smart editing tools to modify your pipe networks. We'll see you soon.